Hey everybody, Jared Bendis here, and I've got a new tutorial. So I was looking on YouTube, and apparently last year on September 28th, 2019, almost a year ago, I did a demo on how to do photogrammetry with Agisoft Metashape. And I had a lot of questions, and the number one question I had was, do you have a version that won't cost me any money? Photogrammetry tends to cost money, and it's pretty awesome. Well, I've been looking into various utilities, and some of them are difficult, and some of them aren't difficult. And what I did was I found one called 3DF Zephyr Free. And here it is, 3DF Zephyr Free, and I figured I should give the same demo all over again, but in this software to see what happened. But, because I'm going to use the exact same data set, let's take a look at last year's video. We're going to start off by going, photogrammetry is the process by which you turn lots and lots of photos into a 3D model. And for our demo today, I went to the Cleveland Museum of Art, and they've got a really cool show in which they have a column capital of a grotesque. And if we kind of look around here, we have I have taken all these photos. And it was neat because it was mounted uh, on its stone pedestal, and it was kind of fake mounted on, on the top with, like, looks like drywall. And I could only get half of it. And then I had to go around the other part of the wall and get the other half. And I made sure to get all the photos from above and from below and from what I was called the belly shot. So I want to make sure that I've seen everything that I could see. But I didn't do anything special. These were shot with my iPhone. I spent literally a few minutes and I took a total of 99 photographs. All right. So that's what I started with. That was, a, that was last year, 99 photographs. The first thing we're going to note is, is that Zephyr has a limitation, the free version only allows for you to have 50 photographs. So I made a folder where I deleted every other photograph. And that's it. I literally just deleted every other photograph. So now my folder has 50 photographs in it. And we're going to see, is that going to make a big difference here? And is the process going to work the same? Again, free, not free. We're also going to take a, a look at how the process works. I'm going to try to do it the exact same way. But before we jump into the new software, let's jump to the end of this and see what the software looked like after I was done rendering. And there you go. Obviously, it doesn't know texture at the top and the bottom, but this is a beautiful textured model. So that's what I made. Last year, that's what I made using 99 photos in Agisoft Metashape. What can we do today using 50 photos in 3DF Zephyr Free? That's the question. Let's start out at the beginning. Now, 3DF Zephyr Free, in my experience, works so damn fast and so damn automated that it can be confusing because you press one button and it's just done. I'm going to slow us down a little bit. I'm going to walk us through step by step. So the first thing is cameras. I need to put in some cameras. New project. And I'm not going to check any of these boxes. When I, I'll check the last one. I'm not going to check these boxes because I'm going to make it sure that it stops after every step. And I'm going to load my 50 photos. There they are. Again, by the way, I did literally just deleted every other photo of my list. Don't worry, I saved them all somewhere else. When I hit next, it reads the metadata, which is very nice. So it knows exactly what phone I had and what the settings on the phone were, which is also very useful. And uh, when I'm using my other cameras, I've noticed it brings it in as well. Again, 50 photos from an iPhone at an art museum. No flash, of course, never use a flash in the art museum. I hit next. And no changes here. I'll just leave everything as the default. I hit next again. And it's going to attempt to figure out where the cameras are in space and give me what's called a sparse cloud. So it's going to basically calibrate the cameras to each other the very first time out. And I hit run. And it's going to go. Now, interestingly enough, in the last video, I stopped every time and, you know, cut and came back. In this video, we're going to find that Zephyr runs really fast. Now, the computer I'm using is not very powerful. It's not horribly unpowerful, but it's not extremely powerful, though you may hear the fan kick on when the processor heats up. If it goes long, I'll just speed it up a little bit. But right now, uh, in my experience for what we're about to do, it shouldn't take more than a couple minutes to get from 50 photos to a sparse cloud, and that's really exciting. Again, what it's trying to do is trying to align and figure out where I was in space when I took all these photographs, and that's what it's doing right now. I love photogrammetry. It really is amazing. The other thing I love about photogrammetry is how much data I already have. How many places I've been to where I've already taken all these photos and went, uh-oh, let's go back and pull those photos out and see what happens. Oh, there's my fan kicking in. 
All right, let's see it matching all the photos together. I think it's I think it's almost done. Finalizing. All right, that's it. Now it's telling you that 50 out of 50s have uh, have been oriented. Now when you're doing this, you may find that the software may throw out a photo or two or three or four or all of them because it couldn't align them. In this case, 50 out of 50 means they all got used. And if we look, look at that. And if you saw the other video, this is very similar. I mean, look at that. Now you're like, wait a second, it's upside down. It's, I, it's weird how it always upside down. One day I'll figure out why it's upside down. I can actually flip that, by the way, and make it not upside down, but we'll get to that in a second. If I zoom around, what you're gonna see is, is that there's more than just my, uh, my column capital. There's all this other data here as well. And what that other data is, is the other parts of the room that the software is actually able to, to, to synchronize with. So what ends up happening was, is, is that I shot beyond the column, multiple cameras saw beyond the column, and now I was trying to reconstruct the entire room and all the walls inside of it. So what I need to do now is get rid of all of the data that I'm not using. Before, I, I'm going to go from the sparse cloud to the dense cloud. Now, if I did it automatically, it would just keep marching along with the data. But I don't want to have to process data that I'm not going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I want to delete the data I'm not using. Now, there's two different ways of doing this. And... I can come over here to editor and I can say by hand and I could come over here and I could with the, um, the lasso tool, I could grab the pixels I don't want and hit delete. Not pixels, the points I don't want and hit delete. Or I could actually come over here and I could grab what I do want, roughly. I can then invert what I have selected and then hit delete. And that deletes everything except what I have selected. Of course, that's much, much better. And if you look, there's no data out there that I don't need anymore. Now, one of the weird things about Zephyr is if I try to do two things at once, it's going to warn me that I have a tool open, which is, of course, what this window is. Let me close that tool. Always important to close that tool so I can take a look at what I'm looking at. And um, now, look, this is pretty cool. But you'll see, uh-oh, there is some more data there that I don't want. So I'm going to come over here by hand, grab a rectangle. I think I'm going to come over here and say, I want to keep that much. So I'll get rid of the rest of it, invert it again, hit delete. And now I think it looks pretty good. Let's take a look, see what I've done. Kind of a little bit of an angle there because this isn't straight up and down. Can always fix the alignment later. But for the most part, I am, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with this. All right. So I have now created a sparse cloud. After I've, oh, I can see there's a couple more dots in there I can get rid of. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually do a full demo here. So I'm going to go, I don't want that. Those are way outside where I need them to be. Oops. I'm in a different rotation mode. I want to be in the orbit, the camera style orbit. Yeah, that'll, that'll be much better. I was in the orbit where whatever I touched became the center of focus. All right, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. And I can go from there. So, what's the next step? Well, the next step is, now that all the cameras, by the way, that's what these things are. These little blue things here, those are all the cameras. Now that all the cameras are there, I want to use all those cameras and try to build a 3D, and get better data out of it. There's a sparse cloud, I want a dense cloud. And you can see, by the way, cameras, sparse cloud. Go back to my workflow, and now I'm going to do 3D model generation. I click on 3D model generation, I say all cameras, next. Settings by default, next, and I hit next again, and I hit run, and now it's going to run. Now, this is going to take a few minutes, but it's nowhere near going to take the amount of time that it took the last time, uh, where my computer kept crashing. Not important. So, let's speed this up. And here we go. Stereo processing has been completed with success. I click on finish and wow, look at that. That is amazing. A little bit of air on the bottom there, but that's not a, that's not to be expected. That's, that's, that's to be expected. Look at that though. That's pretty pretty spiffy right there. So, we have dense point cloud and mesh. Look at that. 
That is a dense point cloud right there. And that is the mesh. Did it both at once. So the camera is aligned to the sparse cloud, sparse cloud to dense cloud, dense cloud to mesh. Look at that. That is pretty spiffy. But could it be spiffier? Of course it could be spiffier. The reason, the next part, of course, is that this is not a watertight model. I couldn't 3D print this if I wanted to. It's open. It's also got holes in it. So I need to, to do a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, editing here. So now we'd edit all over again. Let's see if I can get the editing right this time. What I want to do is I want to get it so that I can see both of these at the same time. And let's see if I can get a nice clean shot of this and cut more of the top off. By hand, let's try another rectangle. Uh, a little bit angled there. Let me close this editing tool. See if I can get it a little straighter. Uh, a little straighter like that. Mm, that looks good. And let's come back over here. Let's get this rectangle like that. That looks good. And yeah, that looks like I did nice and even there. That makes me happy. So let's come back up here. Let's grab another rectangle. The top is straight. Maybe the bottom will be straight. Maybe we'll be lucky. Let's close this. And oh, a little bit, a little bit more. Probably could have done a little bit more there. Got that little lump there. Another rectangle. Straight on. Rectangle. See if I can get this to go like that. Hope that's good, because that's what I'm doing. A little bit of an angle there, but I'll take it for today's demo. So what I want to do now is before I generate the texture, which is the next step, I want to seal the holes. So how am I going to seal the holes? Well, I'm going to go to Utilit, I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm going to go to Mesh Filters, and I'm going to say Fill Holes Watertight. And I'm going to say, you know what? Fill all, and it's going to fill all the holes. I have no idea how it's going to fill the holes. Let's see how good of a job it does. It shouldn't take that long. There aren't that many holes. There's two really big ones. And there they are. Uh, top one fills as expected. And the bottom one, not bad, not bad. All right, so there we go. So that looks pretty good. So again, uh, we're getting close to the end, but let's take a look. We had the sparse cloud. We had the dense cloud. The dense cloud is where all the dots are. Um, we had, and notice whether there's still stuff in the dense cloud because I didn't delete the dense cloud. I deleted the mesh, which is what the mesh is what I actually um, sealed. And now, now I need to build, go to my workflow again, and I have a 3D model, but I want a textured mesh. So let's come over here to textured mesh generation, say use all 50 cameras, and this time make me a texture map. And it's gonna do that. Doesn't take very long, I hope. But it's really important to remember that each step, what you edit from one step is what's used for the next step. So like if I would have used the sparse cloud as is, that's what would have given me the dense cloud. And then if I edit the dense cloud, and then that's what used me the, the, the mesh. So each one is, is one step further. So if I edit along the way, which is what happens, which is now what happens, if I leave all the check marks checked, where it just kind of runs through, I want to be able to edit along the way and make my own decisions. That's just me. Plus, it's the same workflow I did for Agisoft. So it gives you a little bit of a comparison as to how things are working. Now I'll wait for it to finish. And it's done. And that is my textured mesh. So take a look at that. That is pretty 
spiffy. And the best part about this is, is it's free, folks. 50 photos and it's free. And it works really, really well and fairly consistently. And don't worry about the fact that the top and bottom have a bad mesh because, well, I mean, bad texture because there was no texture there to begin with. Remember, it's still a 3D model. You're still going to have to tweak it by hand. But, I mean, think about this. All I did was go to the museum, walk around, and photograph it. But you're like, well, what's the next step? Well, there is a next step. There's two next steps. File, save. And if I go to the desktop, I should have a folder called column. And I could call it column. So now I have the project so I can go back in here and do fun things with it later. But I also can go export, export textured mesh. The textured mesh, by the way, is the final version. So remember, cameras to sparse cloud. Sparse cloud to dense cloud, dense cloud to mesh, uh, water type to mesh, mesh to textured mesh, textured mesh to the internet. So textured mesh, and I can upload it right to Sketchfab, which I won't do. Instead, I'm going to save an OBJ file. I'm going to leave everything here. I'm even going to leave the, the created with 3DF Zephyr in because you know what? It was free. And I can hit export, and I'm going to call this my column save it's going to export it and while it's exporting it i'm going to sneak over to the folder so i can see what it looks like what exactly it exported how big it is and that kind of stuff and there we have three files we have the mtl file the jpeg file and the obj file the obj file is 10 megabytes the jpeg file is 10 megabytes i love looking at a texture map it just for me it's just really really fun to see that this is what the texture map looks like. There it is, pretty cool. So how are we gonna view it? Well, let me come over here and double click on the OBJ and I'll let it load in the Windows 3D model viewer. Because if it can load it, then it's there. Oh, and it loaded it, which is great. It's on its side, I have to get the, look at that. This is pretty awesome. So there you go. Pretty, pretty awesome. A 3D FSF for free, 50 photos, relatively straightforward workflow, gives you the same exact control as I showed in my Agisoft demo, and there it is. So I have to say, thumbs up for me. Not that I don't like Agisoft. I do like Agisoft. Uh, and later on, I will do a 3D Zephyr Pro demonstration at some point. I don't have the license yet. But I'm going to see what kind of things it does that the other one doesn't. But right now, right here, I got to say, this is pretty awesome. And let me look at my timer. I haven't even edited this yet, and I'm only looking at 27 minutes. So that means with all the waiting and all the whatever I did, that's less than 30 minutes for this entire demo. So I'll speed it up a little bit just for you. But you'll see that this is not a bad process at all. So there you go. Interested in see what comments you have for me this time? Remember, please... Like, subscribe, and share. I am Jared X2 on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, everywhere. Thank you for watching.